prettiest words. I also read it somewhere, I think, that of, he used like 17,000 words, um, or some such, and I may have the wrong number, but that's how I remember it, 10% of which he made up. <laughs> <laughs> so he sort of invented language along the way. I mean, you just, you can't get away from the beauty of it. Some people ask me, are you going to use the text? As, uh, you know, as you're doing a modern, uh, much do, are you going to use the original text? Yeah, that's all there is. <laughs> or, or can you use the stage directions? <laughs> it's just, he's, he's the man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to say, first off, you have a very lovely home. <laughs> the architect and executive producer, Kai Cole. Uh, I just wanted to ask, of all of Shakespeare's comedies, what made you choose not to do? It all takes place in the home. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, you know, again, these two made me choose it. Uh, I love it. It's a very modern text. It's very accessible. Um, and, yeah, again, yeah, no forest. <laughs> but I am also a huge fan of Twelfth Night. But that's three of <laughs> Over there, yes? Wait, 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 where's my phone? There's something I could yell loud enough. Um, just talking about how beautiful your home is, um, how much did the pre-existing setup of your home then reflect the sets and your usage of, especially you know, when the boys are just arriving and coming into what is, I'm going to assume, your daughter's room, and just the comedy that's coming from the pre-existing sets of the lovely home that you do have. Did you guys, you know, just kind of roll with the punches, or did you do some of your own set set direction and set design for um, what you thought would make us enjoy it more? Um, well, we didn't have any money, <laughs> so it's mostly what it was, except um, the kids' room, the girls' room. It's not like that. Um, <laughs> Toys. That was um, Sydney and Michelle, so they're the set decorators, and they did an amazing job. And they just used stuff, you know, from around the house and brought it into different areas. But really, that's weirdly kind of just how it is. So it's going to be weird going back. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty much as it is. And Joss had always said that um, part of the movie was also a love letter to the house. Thank you very much, everybody. It was a great movie. Enjoy it. Round of applause forever. Um, how much rehearsal did you do of the text? Because the text is so rich, and when you're filming Shakespeare and you're handling text in a play, it's so diverse in, in the way that it's handled. I know you didn't have a long shoot, so how much rehearsal as a cast did you do be a, like a table read beforehand? Uh, way more than I gave them. Um, what we, we had a couple of weeks. About two and a half weeks before we started shooting, he called and said, would you want to do this? <laughs> you didn't much do in two and a half weeks. Well, That's awesome. Well, sort of every other afternoon, because I was also editing the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't tell Marvel. <laughs> don't tell Marvel. <Marvel's laughs> <Marvel's laughs> <Marvel's laughs> Clark, of course, had, you know, a day. <laughs> it wasn't a full day. No, I'm just kidding. I actually saw some of the guys from Marvel. Right around then, they were like, could you come in and do this thing? I said, I, I can't do that that week. Because I'm doing something tomorrow with Jobs. And they were like, what? <laughs> I'm fairly certain he's editing the Avengers. <laughs> I think that's his vacation. <laughs> and they were very concerned about the saying that. <laughs> but then I, I was there for a day, and I, I've never seen anybody happier or more relaxed than Joss, you know, doing Shakespeare in 10 days at his house. And I just called him, I said, I think you can feel at ease that he's recharging himself. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Uh, yes, please. 
Not yet, that's you. Hi, um, I was, you know, alcohol is very prevalent in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and other than, you know, there is an importance of alcohol, but I was wondering if there was a deeper meaning to it. <laughs> You know, they just bring that. <laughs> <laughs> Reed said to me backstage, I'm still drunk. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, uh, we were trying to evoke, uh, we refer to it uh, occasionally as the Kennedy compound, we were trying to evoke the, sort of, the privilege of the people who just party all the time, and, and also we feel that certain decisions that were only justified if you were smart. <laughs> okay, last question. Um, sorry. <laughs> Over there. Yes, you. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering, because it is such an iconic text and there have been so many versions of it that have been done, and I think particularly with like, the, the brand new version that this was just as amazing as, uh, do you look at the other versions before when you decide to do something like this, or did you just try to clear your head of everything else that had been done? I tried very hard to see it. I already knew the Brown Up by heart. I'd seen it many times when it came out. I was amazed how long ago it came out. It was like 18 years, 19 years ago. Um, and it didn't seem that long at all. Um, but I deliberately stayed away from it, and especially from the music of Patty Doyle, because uh, that stuff is pretty indelible. Um, and you don't want to ape it, and you don't want to make your movie trying to react against it. So as much as possible, I just bubble. I did watch one scene while I was scoring, just to hear, um, where he was placing music. It's uh, Don John and Conrad, uh, and I think the scene where they're, uh, where you say, I'm a plain dealing villain, I'm just going to go ahead and say that our version is a little sexier. <laughs>